point in my life I was now 30 years old. Years and years of drug and alcohol abuse and addiction. Man, life just flew by. I was working paycheck to paycheck in the construction industry. I was even dealing drugs to support my own habit, my own addiction. I had a bunch of friends over my apartment. And one of my buddies, he had the remote control for the television. So he, he starts flipping through the TV channels. And all of a sudden, he lands on professional wrestling. I go, whoa, 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 stop it there. Let me see this. <laughs> As I'm looking at that television, I get this overwhelming feeling. You know the aha moment? I'm, guys, I can do that. My buddies busting out laughing. They go, you crazy, man. Look at the size of those guys. They will pick you over their head and throw you right out of that ring. I go, no, I'm telling you, I can do that. My other buddy goes, Mark, you're 30 years old. What are you going to do, start a pro career now? I said, yes. And then I said those two words, I believe. That was the action I took next that changed my destiny. Just like it's the action you take when you walk out those doors. What will you do different tomorrow that you didn't do today towards your goals, your dreams, your passion, your family? Well, the action I had to take back then, I had to find out there was a wrestling school. I know how to wrestle. I was living in Venice, Florida at that time. And there was a wrestling school in Tampa. It was about 60 miles apart. I started driving there after work on weekends. One year later, at 31 years old, I signed this huge contract in professional wrestling. And not only that, guys, I wrote about it when I was 10 years old. I was voted wrestling's rookie of the year. Dreams come true. You gotta believe in your starts today by writing it into existence, putting it somewhere where you have to see it, taking action towards your dreams and goals, and not being defined by someone else's opinion. Now, for the first time in my life, I got money. I need lots of money. And when you get lots of money, what do you do? Spend it. Yes, you start buying stuff. So the first thing I did when I got my signing bonus, I bought my mother a house in Sarasota, Florida. I paid cash for it. And then I started buying all the other things I wrote down in my little book. I went out and bought one of them speed boats. <laughs> now, my shirt, that was, that was back when short shorts were in. <laughs> okay, but then I built my first house in Marietta, Georgia. And guys, who's parked in the driveway? It's my black Cadillac, so no, I'm rich, I'm famous, I'm hanging out with movie stars and celebrities, I'm having dinner with the President of the United States, Muhammad Ali is coming to watch me wrestle, I'm hanging out with Kid Rock, I'm touring with Gene Simmons and Kiss, Shaq's my buddy, I'm wrestling with Hulk Hogan, I got my own action figure, actually that's what I'm but I've become a millionaire, and I've always been living the water, so I built another house on Amelia Island, I got everything the world to say, Mark, you made it, you After I cleaned up my life and made it in professional wrestling, I resort to my old ways. And the first thing I did wrong, again, was the people I chose to hang out with. Alcohol and drugs come back with a vengeance. Not just that, now prescription medication and pills, the only difference in my life, I got all the money to buy anything I want. And my world starts spinning out of control. Alcohol, drugs, pills, addiction, bad choices, hanging out with the wrong people. But I always thought when I was a little boy, if I was only rich and famous, I'd be happy. I've never been so sad and so empty in my entire life. I thought, wait a minute, maybe if I got a home with a fountain and tennis court and basketball court and lots of land, because now I'm a multi-millionaire celebrity, so I've now got myself a bigger house. I got everything the world's in my you made it, you're rich, you're famous. I saw you on TV, but my world is spinning out of control faster and faster. Every day, alcohol, drugs, pills, addiction, bad choices, hanging out with the wrong people. I got this beautiful home. I got everything the world will say, Mark, you made it. But because of my bad choices, I lost it all. That's right, I lost everything. My ex-wife of 10 years, she walked out the door and divorced me, and I don't blame her. But then I lost over 30 friends. Most of my friends died from their bad choices. Some died from suicide and murder, but most died from drug overdose. My friends, they, they were all rich and famous. In fact, I wrestled every guy that's on that list. Many of us toured together for up to 14 years. 
reason I call this a death list? It's a reminder every day I'm alive of a list I should have been on. My name, Mark Merrow, should have been on this list. Guys, I did everything they did. And some nights I did a whole lot more. I have overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe with all my heart I was kept here for a reason. I believe there are students sitting in this gym today whose lives are going to be forever changed and you'll never forget the conclusion of my story. Sometimes in life you think, I can't get any worse. Well, when you make bad choices, mine did. I was on a worldwide tour. We were wrestling overseas in Japan. There was this knock at my door at three o'clock in the morning. And I got out of bed, I go up to the door, and I clear the little safety window, and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I open the door, and he goes, Mark, you need to call home, there's an emergency. I run back in the room, I get on the hotel room phone, I call back to the United States, I said, hey, look, what's going on? He said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. All of a sudden, she just started crying at me, and she was inconsolable, I couldn't understand what she's saying. I said, just tell me, I don't know how to. I said, just say it. And she just goes, Mark, your mother died. I just dropped the phone. I mean, I, I ran out of my hotel room and I, I took the elevator to the lobby and I remember the doors opening up and I just ran through the lobby, out the doors, into the street. I mean, there was no cars, there was no people. It was three o'clock in the morning. I walked down the middle of the street in Hiroshima, Japan. And I remember just looking up and saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for a funeral, but I, I couldn't walk up to her casket. I, I just couldn't do it. I stood as far back as I could, and oh my gosh, the line to see my mother was so long, I was out the door. And, and I kept looking from a distance, but I kept thinking to myself, Mom, please wake up. Please get up. And then when the last person finally said goodbye to my mother, I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. And as I got closer, I could see my mom for the first time. I mean, she looked so beautiful. She looked like an angel. I just stood over and I said, Mom, you are my hero. Everything I am, everything I hoped to be was because of you. You love me so much. You gave me a life. You worked two jobs. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How'd I repay her? By getting drunk, by getting high, by getting stupid, by hanging out with losers for what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. I have been a better son. Choices. We are defined by our choices. You guys remember my little brother, Guy Christopher? <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be like my big brother, Mark. Hey, Mark, can you pitch me some? I'll tell you, man, I've got time for that. You want to play catch? I said no. Can, can I hang out with you? Get out of here. My brother grew up okay. He grew up so much better than me. He married his long-time girlfriend, Gina. I'll never forget Gina and Guy Chris were coming to my house with his big smiles and everything. He goes, hey, Mark, I want you to be one of the first to know. Gina and I, we're going to have a baby. I said, what? I'm being uncle. He goes, Uncle Mark. <laughs> I'm so excited. My brother got this really good job, and everybody's new employment had a drug screen. In other words, they had to get a blood test taken for drug screening. Hell. My brother Guy Christopher's always been deathly afraid of blood. You guys might know someone like this, for example. If Guy Christopher ever saw somebody bleeding, he'd go, oh man, I gotta sit down, I'm getting dizzy. And sometimes a kid, he just pass right out. But as an adult who still had this, this phobia, he was sitting in the waiting room in the doctor's office, and the nurse came in and called his name. So he gets out of his chair, and he starts following the nurse, and all of a sudden he stops. He goes, nurse, I'm just getting really dizzy. She goes, oh, okay, sit 
that down. But before she could come back and grab him, my little brother has passed out. Fell over backwards. He hit his head on the floor in the doctor's office. I'm on the road wrestling. I'm on tour. I get this phone call and they said, Mark, you're your brother Guy Christopher had a falling accident at the doctor's office. He's at the Sarasota Hospital. Now, my first reaction, I'm on tour with Russell. I'm like, okay, how bad can you get hurt at a doctor's office? I said, would he break his arm? And then he answered. It's like this long pause. And all of a sudden she just goes, Mark, can you get here as soon as possible? What? So I asked for permission to get off the tour. And of course they allowed me. I traveled to the Sarasota Hospital as fast as I could. I took the elevator up to the ICU and I ran down the hall to his room and when I opened the door to walk in, I, I could see these machines keeping my brother alive. I said, no. I asked everybody in the room to please leave. It was my older sister, Jody, my other brother, Joel, his wife, Gina. I mean, she was pregnant with her baby. Friends and family, they're all around the bed holding hands and praying. I, I just want to be alone with my little brother. You, you see, my mother died two weeks before this. Dear, how much can your heart really take? Everybody left the room, so I went over to his bed and I just put my hands in the way. I just stared at him. <laughs> he looked so handsome. It looked like he was just sleeping. cigarette smoking. My mother died from a massive stroke after years of smoking. She was only 58. And my dad, my dad was my best friend. He died while I was holding him in my arms in the hospital from lung cancer. You should still be here. If you guys have a brother or a sister, when you go home today, just tell them how cool they are. Tell them how beautiful they are. If you have a mother, a father, grandparents, or a guardian, when you go home, you tell them how much you love them. That was the last picture I ever took of my mother before I left to go to the airport for Japan. As I was leaving, she said, hey, Mark, before you go, can I take a picture with the belt? <laughs> sure, Mom. Who would ever think it'd be our last picture? This goes to show, Mom, you are the real champ. And if your parents smoke cigarettes, you tell them how much you need them. I don't have that choice anymore, but maybe you do. Maybe you can bring hope to a student who's been hopeless. Maybe you can be the light in somebody's darkness. Maybe you can make all the difference in somebody's life if you just put forth some effort. Guys, it doesn't even take a lot. See, my whole life since I was a little boy, I believed a lie. And the lie was if you're rich and famous, you're happy. So I grew up thinking, I gotta be rich, I gotta be famous, I gotta win the race, I gotta win the race. I had to win the race expense of my marriage, my family, my friends. For what? <laughs> to be all alone in the world? That's not how it's supposed to be. Life is not about winning the race. Life. It's about finishing the race. And how many people we can all help finish this race. How we can start being kinder to each other. How we can help those students that are going through adversity, being bullied or abused, and stand up for each other. How we can start spending more time with our family and people that truly matter. Maybe even tomorrow morning before school, you guys can maybe take a little note, like a post-it note or something, and, Write a letter to your a little note to your parents before you leave for school. Stick it on the mirror and write those three words they long to hear. I love you. Because in the end, it may be you that needs help to finish the race. <laughs>